Hello everyone, we hope you are doing well. This is still part of the series of lecture videos for the year two workshops of the Catchment Project, particularly the workshop on geomorphic change detection. In this video, we will discuss the LiDAR survey conducted during the project, which has three components, the acquisition, processing, and validation. First up, what is LiDAR? LiDAR, or light detection and ranging, is a method of gathering topographic points by emitting laser pulses and receiving it back in order to produce a model of the terrain features present within the project area. It includes three technologies, the LiDAR scanning mirror, which sends out the pulses to measure the distance, the global positioning system, or the GPS, which gives us a location of the equipment, and the inertial monitoring unit, which is used to measure the pitch, roll, and heading of the platform. LiDAR systems may be classified based on its application, ranging technique, target detection principle, and platform where it is deployed such as spaceborne, airborne, terrestrial, ground-based, marine, and submarine. For this specific project, we use the Airborne LiDAR system to capture an aerial image of the fluvial terrains of Bislac and Pinacanawan de Ilagan rivers and produce digital elevation models or DEMs for the years 2019 and 2020. Limitations and constraints from conventional ground surveys, such as use of transits and diode lights, and other forms of trans traditional terrain data collection, paved the way to develop this technology. At present, LiDAR is often used for its high accuracy of DEM since it emits, it emits millions of laser pulses and provides location of each of these points with much precision. This mode of terrain survey is also proven to be cost effective for larger projects as it covers a vast area at a shorter period of time. Since LiDAR can be mounted on different platforms, areas inaccessible by land, air, or water can now be measured or surveyed. Furthermore, since LiDAR technology is an active type of remote sensing, which means it has its own source of illumination, it can be used either day or night. LiDAR data is also versatile as it can be integrated with other data sources and numerous applications. However, LiDAR is not an all-weather system, since it won't be operational at extreme weather conditions. And large data sets may require high-end softwares and machines for processing. In addition, LiDAR pulses are unable to penetrate thick vegetation and very dense forest covers and become unreliable for water bodies as depth increases. So focusing on our project, the overall LiDAR survey consists of three phases, the data acquisition, data validation, and data processing. The flight mission for data acquisition in the Bislak River took about four hours to complete a survey across the 31 kilometer river stretch. This was done in um, February where we expect to have the lowest flow uh, um, along the river. And flight plans were predetermined. Weather was one of the top priorities before proceeding with the survey because the sky should be clear with minimal cloud cover as much as possible to avoid or minimize shadows, sun glints, and to capture a consistent and clear aerial image. So after the flight, the data were sent out to the processing team for checking. And um, so they'll check if the captured data points and order images are of acceptable quality, because if not, um, a survey should be conducted. To make sure that positioning is accurate, control points are strategically established at um, locations accessible near the survey area. In establishing control points, simultaneous observation of the Maria control points benchmarks 
and base control point was done for at least 4 hours that determined the horizontal and vertical position of these control points. So shown here is the distribution of the control points established for the project. The connection between two control points during observation are called baselines. And to determine the success of this survey, a certain precision has to be met by these baselines. Specifically, baseline horizontal error must not exceed 0.1 meter or 10 centimeters, and vertical error must not exceed 0.2 meters or 20 centimeters. When the required precision is not met, masking will be done. Basically, what masking does is it excludes observation wherein the connection between the GPS receiver and the satellites have been compromised. Reprocessing is done to see if the required precision is now met. So if the precision is still not met after masking, resurvey must be um, or may be the best option. So from the table displayed shown here, it can be seen from the summary that the ground control um, survey met the required baseline precision. So the, all the horizontal um, errors are less than 0.1 and all the vertical errors are less than 0.2. Ground validation survey was done within the study area to determine the overall quality of the acquired data. This phase is very, very important to check whether the acquired LiDAR points have similar coordinates or less residuals with the actual ground points. So in conducting the ground validation survey, at least two GPS receivers were used. One unit was set up at the established base control point and the other one was mounted on a vehicle as seen here in the photos. The GPS receiver mounted on the vehicle is set up to continuously record points um, while the vehicle is traversing the study area. It is very important to note that the validation points should be measured at fixed and semi-permanent or stable locations which are, which are less prone to change position laterally and vertically over time like concrete roads and highways. And post-processing kinematic survey was done for the um, ground validation survey. This means that uh, points were gathered on the field and after which processing was done together with the data from the base station in order to apply corrections to the acquired field data. And here a total of 13,737 validation points were gathered to be used to compare with um, aerial LiDAR data in Vintar alone. Once all the data were at hand, meaning the LiDAR data and the validation data, processing was then started. This phase involved three stages, trajectory computation, LiDAR point cloud processing, and ZEM editing and hydrocorrection. The first stage computed the aircraft's trajectory throughout the entire flight. The trajectory was then smoothed through a software and the best estimated trajectory was evaluated if it achieves the necessary accuracy by computing for the RMSC or the root mean square error. After trajectory computation, the processing team conducted point cloud rectification which assigns ground coordinates for each LiDAR point by merging the trajectory and the range file from the laser sensor. After generating a reference LiDAR point cloud, the overlapping areas arising from the variation in the computed trajectory were corrected by matching similar points from overlapping laser strips. So here, the overlapping strips produce a misaligned point cloud data set and, adjustments, and, and adjustments was done to correct this kind of distortion. Following the LiDAR point cloud adjustment, classification was done based on the point elevations. The LiDAR points were classified into ground, low vegetation, medium vegetation, high vegetation, and built-up areas or built-up features. 
The point cloud was then rasterized for it to be more suitable and accessible to different modeling and visualization softwares where the DMs will be used. So the DSM or Digital Surface Model and the Digital Terrain Model or the DCM are both subsets of DMs as previously discussed by Rich. The DSMs includes all the acquired LiDAR points portraying the actual surface of the topography, while the DDM filters out the built-up and um, vegetation features, leaving only the ground terrain. So the figures here below um, show the visual difference between these two. So here in um, you can see the uh, buildings and vegetation, where in the DDM you are just left with the ground um, terrain. Of course, automatically produced DMs inevitably have imperfections and errors that need to be manually corrected depending on the use and application. So for the catchment project where the DMs will be used for hydrologic and hydraulic modeling, editing and specific hydro corrections were necessary. So some common problems for these errors are seen are in features obscured or obstructed by heavy canopy, wherein limited lighter points can pass through. Examples of these errors are seen here in the images on the right. The top row displays a mountain that underwent data retrieval. The second row displays a building that has been removed after um, interpolation. And the third row displays an embankment before and after manual editing here. And the last row shows a bridge before and after interpolation. So I think that's it for the uh, LiDAR survey, for the components of our LiDAR survey. And to better visualize what a LiDAR output will look like, shown here is a clip of a portion of the Bislock River. This is the order photo, and to its right is the digital er, um, terrain model of the same portion. Both were um, taken during our repeat topographic survey in January 2020. Again, thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy the workshop. And if you have any questions and clarifications, just um, please feel free to let us know. Thank you and have a great day.